return from the thinking closet, and alas, I'm here today with the final installment of my scarf video tutorials. Tear, tear, sniff, sniff. It's been a really fun run, but the fun is not ending yet. Be sure to come back tomorrow to the blog for a recap of the week, as well as a special announcement of our giveaway winners. I will also be sharing with you my scarf fail of the week. It's true. It was supposed to be my first tutorial, and yeah, it, it, it wasn't pretty. If you want to see the human side to blogging, come, come tomorrow. Today's tutorial is going to take us out with a bang, though. I'm calling this the so easy, <laughs> gotta love the puns, the so easy turban headband. And this is sort of inspired by the turban head scarf. Um, it's scarf-like, so it qualifies. <laughs> the turban headbands are, I've been seeing them all over the place. I remember I almost bought one at Urban Outfitters this spring, and instead I thought, hey, I'm not going to drop $20 on that. I can DIY that. So it's been in the back of my mind ever since, and today we're gonna tackle it. Now, do not get intimidated by this contraption over here. I know a few of you are about to click away because you're thinking, me, a sewer, no way. I consider myself a beginner sewist, and if I can do this project, you can do this project. Trust me, it's not that crazy. It just involves straight lines. I think there are only three of them that we have to make, so yeah. No excuses, you can totally do this. Let's go ahead and talk about supplies. First, you're gonna need some sort of cutting tool, whether it's a fabric scissor and a yardstick, or in my case, I have a rotary cutter, which also you need a mat and an acrylic ruler to go with it. These all came in a set when I bought them, a Fiskars set. You'll also need needles for your machine and pins. I love my little bird pin cushion that I made with my mother-in-law. You can find that on the blog. Something to mark your fabric with. I have this little chalking marker. A measuring tape. Coordinating thread to match your fabric and a bobbin. You'll also need just one safety pin, and you'll see why. These are sort of optional, but I like to have them. My little snips for the tiny little threads. Snip, snip. Hopefully we won't need a seam ripper, but I like to have one on hand just in case. A seam gauge. Okay, let's talk about this elephant in the room, so to speak. This sewing machine is the first one I've ever owned and I absolutely love it. It's been an easy sewing machine to learn on, so I highly recommend it if you're looking to to invest in one. I bought this machine after it was recommended by Rachel Myers who has a sewing 101 course that's free online so if you're looking for a way to learn I highly recommend it. The Brother CS 6000i. I like to call this the brother I never had because I never had a brother. Love you Lizbeth. Now in terms of fabric we are working with knits. You could use cotton jersey or just some sort of lightweight knit. Knits are very stretchy, especially in one direction. About a half a yard will do. These knits are all from the Fabric Fairy, who happens to be one of our Scarf Week sponsors. Thank you, Meg. And I've been looking for a good excuse to use them. So this is a perfect project for smaller remnants that you might have, a good stash buster. Well, now that we've gone over everything we need, let's start with step one. First step is to get a measurement of the circumference of your head around where the turban headband will go. I'm going to place mine under the hair, up and around. You'll want to pull it semi-tight and 22 inches. Now 22 is where we start. Now whatever number you have, you're going to subtract 2 inches from that number and that becomes our adjusted measurement that we're going to use. So if I'm 22 inches around the head, then I'm going to be working with 20 inches, which is a nice even number to work with. Now it's time to get out your cutting tools, your chalking pen, and your fabric so that we can go ahead and cut it. While knits as a whole are stretchy, you're going to find that it's stretchier in one direction than the other. So I will show you what I mean. Now if I pull this fabric sort of up and down here, it stretches a little. But if I go ahead and stretch it 
horizontally, whoa, it's really stretchy. So we're going to want to have this as the length of our turban headband. That way it stretches around the head. This also happens to be the fabric between the two selvage edges, which you'll often find text on these sides. Um, this just happens to be an extra wide bolt, so I'm sort of fortunate in that regard. Okay, so I'm going to put my selvage edges together since they are semi-straight. And now because this is so nice and wide, I'm going to be able to get both strips out of this one piece. I'm just sort of folding it so there are four layers. One, two, three, four. Once I've gotten everything sort of flattened out, I'm going to trim off this bottom edge and the selvage edge so we have clean lines right here. Let's talk about the width. You, here you have some options. You could make a thicker turban headband and cut yours at about 8 inches. For my first one, I'm going to go a little bit more conservative. I'm going to do a 5 inch width. Okay, now is a good time to mark the fabric. So I'm actually using my mat here for a lot of this. One, two, three, four, five inches. And one, two, three, four, five inches. All right. Time to cut. Now with a rotary cutter, I am no expert, but I know you want to be strong and solid. You don't want to be insecure like I was at the beginning. Otherwise, you're going to end up with these little pieces here, and then they get all messy. Um, and you always want to push it away from you. Now when you open this up, you're going to have your two strips. And remember, we need to cut them so that they are 20 inches long. That was our adjusted measurement after measuring the head at 22 inches and subtracting two. Now if I'm using my mat as a gauge, down here I see the numbers 20 inches. Make a cut. We'll do the same with our other piece. So now we have our strips. Both measure at five inches wide and 20 inches long. Now comes time to fold and pin. I'm going to hop over to the ironing board and I like to press everything as much as I can. It makes sewing so much easier. So I'm going to press these so that they are folded right sides together. This is the right side. This is what you call the wrong side. Right side is going to be facing out, so we're actually going to fold right sides together, press it, and then we're going to pin along these lines. Okay? So I'll be back in just a moment. So, okay, now we're going to just go ahead and pin our strips on that raw edge. I will just remind you all that I still consider myself a beginner, so if there are techniques I use that are rudimentary, or if I use the improper term, my apologies. And I probably will. So, all of you experts out there, Catherine and Cindy and Nancy, Robin, you know who you are. Please, please forgive me. Okay, so now that we have completely pinned together those raw edges, we are ready to take these bad boys over to the machine. So I'll meet you over there. Now I will say I did a test run and I did run into a few issues with the zigzag stitch. One of the things I did to try to fix it was I played with the tension of the upper thread. Um, ultimately, I'm back at the four. Also, I went ahead and restrung my bobbin. It was getting a little bit low. I've heard that in between projects you're supposed to replace your needle, so I went ahead and did that because that can sometimes fix wonky stitching. What seems to have really helped has been playing around with my zigzag stitch in terms of the length and the width. After doing a little bit of internet research, I got a good recommendation to try 2.5 long and 1.5 wide, and that seems to have fixed it. So if you run into issues, don't despair. There actually are a lot of great resources out there in case you need to troubleshoot as well. 
So uh, let's get this camera back on the tripod and we will sew our zigzag stitch. All right, so we have about a quarter inch seam allowance, maybe a little bit more than that. I'm gonna make sure that the outer edge is lined up with the edge of my pressure foot. And here we go. No need to really worry about back stitching here because we're going to seal these off later. Here's where I love to have my little snips. Now that we have our two strips zigzag stitched, it is time to turn them right side out. So the easiest way to do that is using a safety pin. We pinned it so the head can travel down the tube and then you're just going to kind of shove it through and snake it all the way down until you get out the other side. Flip it inside out on itself and then it should be a fun little pull. There you go. Easy peasy. This was how we made scrunchies back in the day. And you're going to do the same thing to the other one. Okay guys, we're in the home stretch. Now that they're pressed, we are going to create an X and you're going to place them so that the seams are touching in the middle. Now we're going to bring together the opposite sides so they meet. I'm just going to sort of lay it to the side and this side too so that the seams meet and they're sort of wanting to pull in the opposite directions and that's how you get that fun turban twist in the middle so let me show you that again just in case you missed it we make an X with the seams touching start with the bottom most piece draw these two together the ends, then you'll sort of see, oh, it naturally you want to pull this this direction so that these match. And now notice that those seams underneath aren't showing. Now that we have our two, our two separate edges, we need to bring them together. So we are just simply going to lay them flush with one another. So now we have all four raw edges coming together to meet. All right, so let's head to the sewing machine for this final step. Now I will say guys, this is the easy beginner method. There are much prettier ways to do this. Since this raw edge is not gonna be seen, it's gonna be tucked under the back of the head. To me, I didn't think there was any need to be extra pretty about it. So you're gonna to wanna to get pretty close to the edge, um, you know, quarter inch seam allowance or so. And we're just going to do a straight stitch up and down several times to make sure it's extra secure. And we will want a back stitch here. One final back stitch. This should do it. So we have our stitch straight across. I got pretty close to the edge. It's just a little bit messy. So here's a good time to use regular old fabric scissors. I'm just going to give it a clean trim. Very careful not to cut off any of the stitching. Just a teeny tiny little trim to, tr to clean it up a bit. That's it. So now I have this nice clean edge. And that is, again, going to be just on the inside, so there's no need to really stress it too much. Now, it's time to flip out 
our head scarf here. You'll see that's that's that nice even closed seam there. Beautiful, beautiful. And oh my goodness, it is so cute. I cannot wait to try it on. Holla! Here is the finished turban headband. Is it not adorable? I'm seriously in love with this right now. And it fits me perfectly. It's just the right level of tightness. I was a little bit afraid it was going to be too tight when I was holding it, but it's not. I love how the two straps sort of split there and the twist in the middle. It's everything I dreamed and more. I mean, I'm being melodramatic, but I'm also being serious. I love it. I do, I do. I'm guessing this would look great with your hair down as well as up in a messy bun or a ponytail. This is probably the way I'll wear it most, but there's that really fun bohemian hipster kind of vibe going on where they wear it around the hair, like Rambo style. Might have to try that in one of my photos for you. <laughs> Not only is this a great thing for you and for me, I think this is gonna make a great gift. I mean, if someone gave this to me, I'd be floored, especially if they said they made it. Oh, and you know what else? Babies, oh my goodness. Like when their head is bald and they need some sort of hair accessory, the turban headband, you would just need to get the circumference of their sweet little heads. Well, I know what I'm gonna be doing with the rest of my afternoon, and that is making more turban headbands. I need something to console myself with now that this is the last Scarf Week video tutorial. Oh, don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. Actually, if you saw the mess that lies behind this curtain, you would know what I'm gonna do after this. Cleaning party. Well, folks, it's hard to say goodbye, but it's not goodbye, it's just see you later. It's just see you till the next blog post. So stop by the thinking closet anytime. The closet door is always open. Before you go, there's just a few people I need to thank. Idea. We're gonna pretend this is the Oscars, the Scarfies, we'll call them. This is my scarfie that I won. And it's time for me to thank all the people before the music plays and cuts me off completely, so I'll say it really fast. Okay, um, first I need to thank my three co-conspirators in Scarf Week, Team Scarfie, Allison, Talita, Vanessa. I could not have done this without you, and 16 tutorials is way more fun than four. So thank you so much for joining me in this crazy series. Uh, huge thanks to our Scarf Week sponsors. You rock! Fabric Fairy Consumer Crafts. I love to create an Etsy. Thank you for your generosity in giving us two sweet giveaways for our readers, and thank you for believing in us. We hope that we were able to send some love back at you. And a big thank you to my husband, Mark, who not only allowed me to string a huge clothesline of scarves across the living room for over a week, but who put up with my crazy, hectic schedule of videoing and video editing, and ugh, you're a saint. And last but definitely not least, I want to thank you. Yes, you on the other side of the screen. It means so much to me to know there's an audience out there watching, and I'm not just talking to myself or talking to a dead camera, but there's someone out there, and there's a lot of someones out there. And your support means the world to me. And oh my goodness, I might cry, but I won't. I'll keep it together. Ah, the music's playing. And <laughs> you seriously inspire me to create. I wouldn't have done any of this if it hadn't been for you. So thank you guys. Oh, and how could I forget the sharks? I mean, without you and your crazy appetite for everything in the ocean, including people, we would never have Shark Week, and then we would never have Scarf Week. So really, this, this award belongs to Jaws. Okay. Anyway. Mm -hmm.